something weird happened. If any of you watched for the first 20 minutes, a few of you did. Uh, something, the screen froze. I don't know. We're back now. I'm dipping this um, little stamp into the hot wax. So yeah, part one is out there somewhere if you want to watch me. Watch me play with hot wax. Um, here's a stamp. Here's the popping off of the board. I'm going to turn it now. There's that. So two more stamps to go on this t-shirt and then one shirt left. And these will be all waxed up. That's an amazing metal worker in the background, metal artist, uh, creating sculptures. And he's, he's soldering right now. So what I'm trying to do is keep my shoulder low, the shoulder, as I dip into the hot wax, because I definitely, like, I can feel it from under there to up here. Like, everything gets crunched up. So I'm trying to keep my shoulder low as I dip into the pot. I guess a higher chair would also be a good idea. Anyway, check it out. This is, um, there's the design. You can see the little drops. Where are they? There we go. This is confusing backwards. Two drops, that's from where the janting tool touched down. It dripped a little bit of wax, but that's a handmade touch that I don't mind. So yay, someone's watching. Thanks, whoever you are. Um, okay, one more shirt to go after this. We're starting to stockpile back here of this design. If you have color suggestions, holler. This is gonna be, this is just the bottom layer. Something else cool is gonna happen between like in and around these things, um, maybe something in the middle, something radiating. I really like this sort of spiritual, sacred geometry look. Can't quite tell yet what it's going to be. It's going to be great. And the backs are blank at the moment, which is fine. I think it's cool to have like party on the front. So this is the last one. I'm going to slide old Danny, Danny Hain in here. And that's to make sure that the hot wax doesn't go through to the back. Sometimes we want that, but I don't on these t-shirts. Keep a nice clean back. And um, the jury's still out on whether or not I'm gonna, I think I will, why not, do my little wax on signature down on the bottom hip. I kind of like that, because then it, if the shirt comes out great and people are wearing it and they're proud of it, um, and other people can see who made it. There's the soldering iron again. So I'm tracing the square, just chilling out. It's uh, 624, which means my clients, my customers, my estudiantes will be here in about half an hour. So, um, hey, Alicia, thanks for asking. These are uh, Fruit of the Loom, which I talked about in the first video, Fruit of the Loom I think is not the most desired brand for a lot of dye artists because um, they shrink a lot. They say they're pre-washed and my experience certainly has been that they are not. They got super, um, super skinny actually. Like the length didn't really go anywhere, but the width, they sucked right in. So I guess that's really great for like all our, our tall and slender friends. It's definitely more of like a slim cut. And these are long sleeve t-shirts, but normally if I have to buy um, conventionally grown and sewn cotton, that um, Gildan is my favorite brand for just like bulk plain white tees. However, since I'm in the Asheville area, we have Spiritex. And if you haven't looked up Spiritex, you should do it. They are an organic cotton company and they source their organic cotton from this region. So it's like grown in the South sewn, milled, all that stuff in the U.S. Um, so here is the, the very thick, thin outline. Where's my light? There we go. Um, these little drops bleh, happen because um, the wax is just, it's so hot, it falls right out of the janting tool. I don't mind because I think that's kind of artistic and cool. Like this looks like a wood block cut to me. Um, I love it. I think that's part of what makes batik look so great is that it's not, um, you're welcome, Alicia. It's not just um, straight plain lines. So here's my favorite part. This is the metal tool. It was a cookie cutter. I have a bunch of them. This is like, 
This is my stash. This is what I use for a lot, uh, a lot of these things. Any metal cookie cutter will do. I've got stars. I've got hearts. And um, I really like these teardrop shapes. These make beautiful sacred geometry. Um, and then I swear the best $20 I've ever spent on my business is these nesting circular cookie cutters. They're really heavy duty. Um, I love them. They take wax really well. They heat up fast. They cool down fast. And you get, um, I don't know how many, a bunch in here. And so a lot of like sacred geometry that's trending hard right now is just shapes on shapes, like the same shape over and over in different arrangements. And so with circles being the perfect one, I got hot wax for my armpit hair. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, I'm using this stamp that was uh, some other stamp that I didn't really like the shape of. And so I used my needle nose pliers to arrange it into this sort of uh, lotus shape. So I'm going to dip it into the hot wax. And thanks for one of you that's still watching. Hey! I can't see who is watching unless you comment. So if you have a question about any of this, go for it. Um, I'm going to push it down onto the material. And then that campaign board that's inside is what's keeping the wax from going through to the other side of the t-shirt. Um, you don't need it if it's a one layer thing. Um, so when I go to India, I'm going to be studying with this batik artist, uh, fifth generation batik artist, who I think he uses a bed of river sand um, and puts the material, they're not doing t-shirts, they're doing like sari material, puts the material right on the river sand. And of course, they're using big, giant wooden blocks where I'm using little metal stamps. There's my three. I'm turning it around. Um, I can't wait to learn how he's doing that. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So Alicia Batik is, um, you know, it's, it's, it uses the same dyes as tie dye, but it's a completely different process. I'm not scrunching, folding, twisting, tying my fabric at all. In fact, I want it to be smooth and non wrinkled. Sometimes I'll like iron whatever I'm working on beforehand because it's really, it's more like, um, it's more like a 2d art because we're just stamping and painting and uh, yeah so I got distracted because I I burned my finger uh, happens all the time I feel like boutique artists we don't really have any fingerprints left so here's the two rows um, of my little lotus shapes and now I'm going to put the two on the corners here